The rebound hammer in use should be maintained in time according to regulations and usage conditions to ensure the accuracy of test data. Maintain the rebound hammer when any of the following situations occurs. 1. Rebound for more than 2,000 times. 2. Doubt the test results. 3. Calibration value of the testing anvil is unqualified. The main maintenance process of rebound hammer. Preparation before disassembly. Rebound hammer disassembly. Parts cleansing. Rebound hammer maintenance and rebound hammer assembly. Maintenance process 1. Preparation before disassembly. It is best to disassemble and assemble on an empty workbench with rubber pad or lay a soft and thick cloth on an ordinary desk to prevent sliding and bumping during disassembly and assembly. Before disassembly, please prepare maintenance tools such as slotty screwdriver, dustless cloth, sharp nose pliers, and sewing machine oil. Before disassembly, please check whether the calibration value of the rebound hammer is normal. The calibration value test should be carried out on a stable, flat, and rigid object. A special 16 kg testing anvil with rock wheel hardness of 60 plus minus 2. And the value read on the machine should be within the range of 80 plus minus 2. If favorable conditions, it is advisable to calibrate by sections on light and miniature testing anvils with calibration values of 60 plus minus 2 and 40 plus minus 2 respectively, so as to ensure that the data at all calibration points are accurate. Maintenance Process 2. Rebound Hammer Disassembly The rebound hammer is equipped with pointer block and pointed piece and the pointer piece is more fragile than other parts. So you should follow the procedures below strictly when disassembling and assembling to avoid unwanted damage. 1. Front cover and snap ring disassembly. Compress the impact rod by hand and the bottom pops up. Hold the body with one hand and rotate the front cover counterclockwise with other hand or plier. Then pull the spring seat carefully and take out two semicircular snap rings. 2. Internals disassembly. Firstly, unscrew the back cover counterclockwise by hand or plier. Then take out the compression spring. Secondly, Rotate the tester body and make the scale face upwards and the impact rod obliquely downwards. Hold the body with one hand and push the impact rod lightly with the other hand. After the flange reaches the back cover, press the hook gently to separate the impact hammer from the hook. Hold the hook in one hand and slowly pull out the internals. Thirdly, lightly hit the impact rod with the impact hammer and pull out the center guide rod backward to completely separate them. 3. Pointer Pivot Disassembly Place the tip of a slotty screwdriver in the groove at the end of the pointer pivot and rotate the screwdriver counterclockwise until the screw thread is completely unscrewed. If the inner of the pointer pivot is tight, the sharp nose plier can be used to assist and pull out it more quickly. Maintenance Process 3 Force cleansing. 1. Pointer block and pointer pivot cleansing. Hold the end of the pointer pivot. Wipe the pointer pivot with a dustless cloth and meanwhile avoid leaving fingerprints. Then tail the pointer pivot on the workbench to be tested and debugged. After that, wipe the surface and inner of the pointer block with a dustless cloth or with alcohol if necessary. 2. Internals cleansing. Wipe the center guide rod. Wipe the surface and face and inner hole of the hammer. Wipe the surface and face and inner hole of the impact rod. And wipe the compression spring. After cleansing, assemble the internals and then apply one to two drops of sewing machine oil, clock oil, 
and transformer oil are the center guide rod. Other kinds of oil are forbidden. Slide and rub the center guide rod with hammer back and forth to ensure uniform oiling. 3. Other Ports Cleansing Use a dustless cloth to clean the inner wall. Guide flange. Hook. Compression spring and other parts. Wipe the alcohol if there is much oil stain or dust. Maintenance process for rebound hammer assembly. After maintenance, assemble both components in reverse order of the above steps. During assembly, please pay much attention to the details or it may not be finished. 1. When assembling the pointer pivot, put the pointer block on the slide inside the casing, press the pointer block with one hand and hold the end of the pointer pivot with the other hand. Note, don't apply oil to the pointer pivot momentarily. Gently pass the pointer pivot through the first support hole, then through the inner hole of the pointer block, and finally reach the threaded hole of the second support. Place the tip of a slotted screwdriver in the groove at the end of the pointer pivot and slowly tighten it clockwise. After fixing, measure the friction force again to ensure that it is qualified. 2. After putting the internals back into the casing, decouple the hammer and align the guide track with groove of guide flange. The semi-circular opening of the guide flange should be aligned with a pointer pivot and the internals should be slowly put into the cylinder. 3. The semi-circular snap ring should be in place. Then put in a new felt ring and tighten the front cover. Put the compression spring into the casing and tighten the back cover. 4. Please do not adjust the zeroing screw at back cover casually. The height of the screw will affect the separation limit of 100 and impact energy. 5. After assembly, conduct calibration value test again to ensure the correction.